welcome everyone to this uh, conversation as an IRS officer yeah. I can immediately my mind goes to revenue if you do not have access to taxation or any sort of revenue which you can actually collect from the local uh, areas and actually have power of disbursing it mm -hmm. and proportioning it then you really have no power uh, the board is trying to assess him whether is this suitable candidate to be a civil servant which means they're looking at him to try and assess three things in the context of the environment in which he is going to work, is whether is he secular, whether he is rational, and third is uh, whether he is uh, ethical. Which are the actors, which are the stakeholders, how they have behaved in past. Yes. So everything is necessary. As a matter of fact, I would say they must create a kind of a mind map. Mm -hmm. They must plot each and every connected issue in a sequential. Right. And then pay attention to each one. I think the best approach is to be straightforward. See, the only difference that a female uh, has with a male in the counterpart is that about the gender issues. Welcome everyone to this uh, conversation, uh, sir, ma'am, Lord sir, it's a pleasure having you all here and I um, am very excited to talk about some things which are very pertinent, very burning. Uh, we've been conducting interviews ma'am and uh, sir, we've noticed that people come and you know the students don't seem to be as prepared as they are. It's my endeavor, it's my job and what I really want to do is to prepare them in the least possible time for what's going to happen inside that room. So based on all these years of experience that you have, what do you think they need to know? So, uh, like yesterday we conducted our first uh, mock interview session. And the sense which I get and uh, the sense which I have been getting continuously for the last three years is that uh, students have, uh, uh, I mean, majority of them have uh, just studied the notes. Uh, the notes they have uh, sort of uh, memorized slash uh, learned by heart and not really gone beyond the written word. Mm. I get a sense that they, you have to, anybody who's uh, on the final stage uh, aspiring in UPSC, you see whatever subject you have studied, whatever topic you have studied, you should not have a 360 view of it. Uh, for the uh, purpose of uh, illustration or example, the conflict of uh, Israel with Hamas. See, now if you know only what is happening or what happened, what transpired on seventh of October, yeah. and uh, the events which unfolded after that, and if you don't know its genesis, mm -hmm. you will not be in a position to comment on or think about. A possible solution. Which are the actors? Which are the stakeholders? How they have behaved in past? Yes. So everything is necessary. As a matter of fact, I would say uh, they must create a kind of a mind map. Mm -hmm. Put use the clock method. Put the issue at the center of the clock, sir. And starting from one o'clock, and then. 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, 12, and maybe clock every 24 hours also. They must plot each and every connected issue in a sequential. Right. And then pay attention to each one. Mm -hmm. Sir, I there think. is another element, sir, to it. Uh, apart from the knowledge, there is the spontaneity which comes with some oration. Like you seem to be able to create, generate content on the go, on the fly. This ability, sir. How can we fast track this to make sure that they do not fumble at least, or they do not suffocate there on the spot? Because that is a red flag. And sir, how can, is there any way to fast track this, you think? Uh, uh, I will share my methodology. Sure. Read everything twice, mm -hmm. as I repeated yesterday also. Read everything twice, think times, and talk about the 10 types. With your peers and with your uh, mentors. So if you talk about it, somebody will point out that this particular thing was not necessary. 
if you put a put your smartphone or camera phone in front of you mm. and record yourself and you view it again and again you will find this particular thing was uh, not within the scope of the question and constantly you keep editing out whatever is oshios mm. or unnecessary mm. and only focus on the crux and this is one method which is very successful definitely sir uh, ma'am in your opinion when when people go into the ups interview invariably uh, they meet a very senior lady officer and uh, that usually probe and um, um, i think it it makes for a difficult situation sometimes when questions like gender equality come up and i think i've seen people like we saw yesterday most people i think are not able to talk so much because they're filtering for what not to say they're worried about something wrong slipping out and so ma'am what would you suggest uh, should be their approach i think the best approach is to be straightforward and talk about what one has real conviction not by what is the hearsay or read in the newspapers or in the magazines but out of all the information that is available one has to make up one's mind and whatever is the own conviction that should be the best uh, possibly is the best approach yes. but of course we have to keep in mind the rules regulations and whatever are the principles that go with it so then we can have take a balanced approach ma'am do you also think uh, what would be your, your advice to female aspirants when they go in for the interview because a lot of them i think a disproportionate amount of them are appearing sir see the only difference that a female uh, has uh, with the male in the counterpart is that about the gender issues mm. otherwise all the information all the knowledge is common mm. so on that he have to have a very balanced approach mm. not that not seeking any favor for being a female mm. but at the same time not being outspoken too much yes just to pre- prove that are mai to bahut mahan hu mai am the queen hmm. so one has to be very balanced in giving any reply got it and before you give a reply one has to weigh the pros and cons of each yes aspect yes um uh major sir major general sorry uh, you asked some very different type of question yesterday and you put people on the spot when you ask them situational questions like for instance i had one a point i remember you asked somebody if uh, they were um, openly uh, if their authority was challenged mm-hmm. in front of the whole team how would they react mm-hmm. and i think that is a litmus test for leadership what your suggestions are how should a person handle these questions uh, now before i come to that you know uh, uh, a candidate must look at uh, what is the board trying to assess him for and very different from a written test which is a knowledge uh, knowledge based test uh, the board is trying to assess him whether is he suitable candidate to be a civil servant which means they are looking at him to try and assess three things uh in the context of the environment in which he is going to work his whether is he secular mm. whether is he rational and third is uh, whether he is uh, ethical now uh and then of course we talk of leadership now the question that i asked yesterday that when the authority is being challenged uh you are authority you drive your authority not from your position that's why we say that leadership is a position that you acquire by uh, is a moral position that you acquire not to be official position that you get so when he asked that question uh, he tried to give me an answer that okay a b c d and that question was based on a very positive experience and why i faced that i said this not as a point and to the good of the organization if he's better than me that he must be and uh, therefore wise uh, everybody will answer in his own way and whatever be his answer he was justified with a logic of certain kind which is common based on the sense we saw he could never answer would be accepted so though we will not accept expect him to give an answer that uh, Maybe I would go on a different three points in this piece. Uh, but I'm curious. Yeah. Would you care to share what really happened? No. In fact, uh, you know, uh, what happened was that there was a interpretative filing competition, and that time there were different types of weapon systems in the army. 
we had some Italian Beretta uh, Beretta pistols which were very good, very accurate, very easy to fire. And the Indian Orders actually made the uh, 9 millimeter pistol, which were heretic, that's not so good. And people preferred the Italian one. So during the heats, uh, we actually had a nice score of 3645. And when that eye was to be broken, he said, sir, it's not a very competition. You are Italian Verita, and then I got this one. Yeah. Uh, you should be firing with the same pistol. I said, I can choose to fire with the same pistol that you're firing, or we drop this pistol. You take my pistol, you take a practice shot, fire 10 rounds, then we'll come back again. And then he said, also, well, if you offered that to me, that's great. One of the important thing is, after the competition, when we fire, this score went down from 36 to 31. Mine went up from 36 to 41 out of 45. And what it told me, he says, so when you offer to drop the pistol and give me yours and buy the mine, I mentally lost the battle. Psychological warfare. Psychological warfare. So uh, uh, you have to answer it uh, supported by a certain logic. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, coming back to you, sir. Yeah. Sir, with these knowledge-based questions and with the optional subject, you know, it can go in any direction. Yes. If a gentleman like you uh, is interviewing an aspirant who suppose uh, PSIR or sociology officer, you could really grill them. When you could take it in any direction, you could talk about Durkheim and what all, I yes, don't yes. even know. Yes, yes. How do you tackle, if you are put in a spot, mm -hmm. how do you get out of it? See, as far as the your optional-based questions are concerned, uh, we would expect uh, the aspirants and the uh, candidates to have studied their subjects thoroughly. Something of everything, as I said yesterday, something of everything and everything or something. Some important subjects very thoroughly. And you can't say that uh, I haven't said I haven't studied this, I had advised that I don't need to read selectively. That is not the thing. It may succeed in uh, not even prelims. In mains exam, if you are lucky, maybe that uh, um, one for 250 words question may not come on that particular subject. But the fact is that you, you are expected to have studied the entire thing. If you are conceptually, you are certain and you are clear, what is the crux of the issue? Then a situation that you are on the whole of the dilemma or you are, uh, you know, in a terra incognita, I mean, lost, which direction to move in, should not arise. So that's my understanding if they have, if they are thorough with their, if they have been in love with the subject they have chosen. I don't think that situation should arise. Yes. It will be, but I would say, they must carefully listen to the question. Now, what we observed yesterday and what I have been observing Having uh, interviewed about 1,000 candidates in the last three years, they jump, they are, they show extra alacrity in enthusiasm in answering the question, you know, jump onto the thing. And, uh, and that, that, that's not necessary at all. In fact, take that uh, 10, 15 seconds in training your reply. First, you must analyze what is being asked. Otherwise, I mean, it is not, uh, I mean, in regards to astrology, that Savalto kuch aur pooch hai aur samadhan kuch aur diya jara. That's not desirable to say it in a very, in a, in, a, in a lighter way. Analyze the question, what is the scope of the question? And uh, in broad three parts like essay, introduction, mean body and conclusion, I think it's a good approach. Very broadly, you should quickly do a mental appreciation. Divide your reply into these three basic ingredients. Introduction. If there is a concept, then say one line about it. Uh, main body, that is, that should form the, uh, the question, the spirit of the question. What is being asked and what is its scope? Uh, may I illustrate it by way of a question? Uh, suppose I will ask a question that uh, 73rd and 74th amendment, constitutional amendments have secured the political decentralization but not administrative decentralization. Now when you hear this, uh, 
دي دي تكنيك شو دي انلايز دي كاتش فريزز فاست ريسيس دي فاست دي فاست كاتش فريزز دي سنترلايزيشن اوف تو كايندز وان از اتشيف وان از نوت اتشيف واي ذات اذر وان از نوت اتشيف ذات از بارت 1 and what is that decentralization what is administrative decentralization what what would it imply what is the import of this phase it would imply that the political decentralization would mean the elections will take place you know gram panchayat and uh, you know panch will be there and all with its attending limitations that pati panch 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 what is that called panch pati and Okay, so those limitations are there, but then the things are happening. It's a work in progress. So, the procedurally things are in place. Elections are taking place, etc. But functionally, they are how panchayats are actually functioning. They have to look back and look at various uh, uh, agencies which are there for uh, uh, assisting them in performance of their functions. So they really that autonomy that. Uh, which the decentralized democracy was supposed to achieve has not been achieved no this is the crux of the question if you take off that uh, in my state the such and such thing has happened and in kerala this has been achieved that was never been asked so it is important to analyze the scope of the question uh quickly form your introduction and main body and conclusion conclusion should constitute what should be done in all this what are the ways what are the ways that those uh, genuinely there may be genuine reasons that uh, this administrative decentralization could not take place what are those reasons meaning thereby that everything that 360 view is required to be available to you and therefore when you are processing this question in your mind uh work out the 90 degrees 45 degrees and 180 degree first let me ask you an interesting question yeah yeah where are you drawing this information from is it being drawn from something that you read or is it your intuition which has now developed uh, to an extent that's a very good question uh experience makes a big difference um, i i would confess that uh, if we see the panelists and all of us are we able to sit because we have lived with these issues we have also developed that uh, i for detail mm. with the passage of time maturity truly sir as an irs officer yeah. I, i can immediately my mind goes to revenue if you do not have access to taxation or any sort of revenue which you can actually collect from the local uh, areas and actually have power of disbursing it mm -hmm. and proportioning it mm -hmm. then you really have no power absolutely and then i mean if you can't levy anything and you're not being supported by any So there are many aspects, you know. Fifteen uh, finance commission has also worked out. So that aspect also comes in. Comes in. Then if you can't raise your taxes and you are not given the responsibility, hmm. that as a pradhan, you have to repose faith in me. Yeah. Also have a, I mean, uh, it is worth examining to have some kind of a criteria or some eligibility that not everybody is. Mm. in a position to deliver exactly mm. so that aspect meaning the by that get those four angles first yeah. and then keep keep filling the uh, you know the 45 and the rest of the angles of that clock yes so four issues and then from each issue you get yes. south south yes. west and south south east yeah. and yeah. develop it into a 360 right so that i think is a good approach yes. that i found that candidates were not able to um probably their mentors mm. not told them this so i think the lack of exposure perhaps to people who've been there uh is one thing which i i certainly lacked when i was there um, okay with yes it also brings me to my next question for ma'am ma'am you ask certain questions to candidates and they seem harmless enough but i notice that they are very uh, piercing questions sometimes what are you looking for when uh the day their analysis how do they analyze the problem and react to it are they able to analyze it properly and give some answers which are 
say, which are implementable. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately they are going to call it shots and they are going to be posted at some place where they are going to rule the show. So I just gave them hypothetical questions just to understand their frame of mind, what do they think and how do they propose solutions to a particular problem. Sure. sure. Whether they are positive or they are uh, perplexed by getting problems. Hmm. So that also showed a trait in the candidate and their way of reacting to situations. So ma'am, would, would it be correct to say that you are looking for presence of mind and, and ownership more than knowledge, personally speaking? Yes. Hmm. That and how do they react to a particular situation? Because many a time situation comes when you really don't know and the problem can worsen worse yeah. if you are not able to deal with it properly. So one has to react with it. All the ki all kinds of problems we encounter while working. Yeah. So we must be aware of it. Correct. Mr. General sir, in the same tangent, in the same tone, so what for you is a red flag? You see a candidate and of course given your personality and your background and the type of questions you ask, it's very likely that they will be asked similar questions. What is a red flag for you? What makes you say there is something wrong here? I think it's quite simple. Character and integrity is the red flag. Hmm. Because uh, when these candidates become civil servants, uh, you know, they'll have a huge amount of authority and a huge amount of independence to get things done. Mm. And uh, as we say that uh, there are three pillars of leadership, which is character, competence and courage. And character is based on integrity. The moment I find as a panelist that he's of suspect integrity and character, for me, uh, he's a reject case. Mm -hmm. Got it. So let me put to you a more sophisticated question. What is the difference between power and leadership and how do we discern at the moment is this person interested in power or is it leadership and because it is a gray area here. Yeah. Unfortunately what happens is that uh, after all kind of mentoring and coaching uh, the kind of answer that you get from students are almost identical in, in basic idea. Uh, but the basic difference between uh, the power and leadership is that I would really tell you the same thing that I'm interested in serving the people, you know. But a lot of which you can get an idea from what he's done so far. Mm. If he has done the kind of already social service of the right kind, uh, as in a individual capacity and made a difference to somebody's life, mm. then you know that he's going to continue the same idea. But if, uh, in fact, I asked a question, this, this question to a person last year. I said, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. And you're talking about providing service to the most underprivileged people. I said, have you ever been hungry in your life? Mm. He said, no, sir. I said, have you ever missed a beat? I said, no, sir. Then I don't think you, I told him that I don't think you understand what it means to be on the both side. So I think uh, based on what he has done, based on his answers, it's difficult to make out because they are very less answers. Mm -hmm. But you can add to uh, what he's actually done voluntarily yeah. and what he's achieved. And you will get a sense of uh, whether he is coming for power or whether he is coming for uh, uh, leadership. leadership and service. Mm. And sir, with the, of course your experience and the way I think the army recruits with this whole aspect of psychological testing, uh, we can discern, I suppose that is the rationale of the interview personality test or the whole thing perhaps is to discern and see the cracks which appear in nonverbal cues, in language um, and the way the person responds to gauge where, where this person is at. And so with your uh, insight now, uh, would there be any suggestions for students to not fall into that trap? Uh, although the army selection process is over a much longer period, actually five days, and the, uh, there are psychological tests, there are two task tests, all kind of, you're being watched 24 hours for five days, so you can't actually fake a personality. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, here he's with you only for 25 minutes. And the only word of uh, assessing him is through question answers. And as I said, that uh, most of them come here well met uh, I'll give you an example, uh, this very interesting example. There was a boy from Ariana last time. Hmm. And I asked him this question that, 
you, uh, your north sister has to be married, your parents are at home, and uh, the boy and the boy's parents are coming in the evening, and you tell your sister that this boy is coming and uh, that's what you think you, you should get married to. And your sister tells you that, sorry, I want to have same-sex marriage. Mm. I love another girlfriend, will ask me to wife, and that's where I will spend my life. Then what will you do? So he gave a perfect answer that it's a matter of choice. The Constitution, Article so and so, provides everybody the right to live the way he lives. Then when he went out, he spoke to the coordinator, and he said, this was the question that was asked to me. I know what answer to give here, and I also know what to do, and I buy oh. So it's actually tough for uh, panelists to really make out because uh, you have to judge him based on the answers that he gives. Yeah. That, that's to be fair to him. Yeah. You don't really know what is going inside his mind. So yeah. that's a tough call. Yeah. And this 25 minutes, it is difficult to make out unless he slips somewhere in answering your question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sir, I, the same question for you. When you ask questions, and I see that your questions are very varied and um, you would prefer sometimes to mix certain situational questions with knowledge-based questions. So what are you looking for? Okay. Like yesterday I asked, I think almost all students, mm -hmm. all, all the aspirants, what was your subject of essay? That was an interesting question. And I, I, I don't think, I think one person answered that satisfactorily. You will recall, majority of them, they were scratching their heads. They were unable to recall what was the subject of their essay. And when had they written that essay? So a couple of, uh, a few Only weeks ago. September. Oh, September. Now with this kind of, I mean, I really wonder. I mean, no comments on anybody's competence. But uh, that leaves me wondering. Mm. Uh, what kind of attention span some candidate would be having? who cannot even remember what, what he or she wrote uh, on her essay paper. Is it such a difficult thing? I mean, some of them were, they could not recall even one word of the subject of the essay. Now that came as it, I had, uh, I had thought, you see, constantly the RLD is going on. Uh, how to test a person, you know, you have to, our forces, uh, General Sir will agree with me. Sir, when we, a lot of, the, a lot of us were non-swimmers. So, Ustad will tell us that, Dekho, GC, yahaan par kisi ka kabristan nahi hai. Ya ab swimming pool mein koi bhi admi mara nahi na drill square mein ho na swimming pool mein. Is liye, aap upar se, aap kood jau. Kuch nahi hoga. Oh, we would say, nahi, Ustad, hum nahi koodenge. He will simply come behind you and throw you into the water. You will go, you know, all the, you know, hands and legs sprayed into the water. And then you realize you're going to drown. And you start to hard pair marna, and then you get the, why I get the hang of the thing, how to swim. And you start swimming. And sir, the last one with the rifle in back, you have to swim. So, if you, I mean, put that in a, in a tight corner. By way of a question which they should have known. It is something like, uh, uh, what did I have for breakfast this morning? Mm. You know, is this, you see, speaking truth requires no rehearsal. So that is one possible way of testing them for uh, their uh, presence of mind mm. and uh, how untwittered they are. Yes. Mm. This is just one way. Second thing is put them a tricky question, a situation-based question, uh, which creates a, dry, a, a dilemma or a trilemma that they are, they, they are a, a, an option has to be exercised. That is also one very effective way of uh, testing somebody, somebody's genuine motivations and intentions. So to have this uncluttered mind, I don't think one can sit and read a book and get that. No, no. So, sir, do you, what do you recommend they do before they go into this, uh, assuming that this may happen to them? Um, how do you clear the mind to be situationally aware? It is a continuous exercise. Mm -hmm. One has to develop that trait. As a matter of fact, as we were discussing yesterday also, 
that uh, the preparation for any uh, exam, especially UPSC, it must commence well in time. And with the right kind of a mentoring, you you are fine tuning yourself. You know, this is a uh, recreation of your personality by firstly pulverizing yourself completely and putting yourself in a new mold. And according to the new mold, then you mold yourself. Now, which must include, uh, I mean, you can fool the world. You can tell lies to anybody. But uh, in the courtroom of your conscience, you can't give a wrong witness because you know you are, you are not being truthful. If you accept yourself as you are with your uh, forte and foibles, your strengths and weaknesses, that is the first step. The process of uncluttering has already started. When you start accepting yourself the way you are and constantly tell yourself that I am comfortable, all right, I am at times reckless, at times lazy, at times not attentive. So having accepted that, then you can start, uh, you know, remolding yourself. So that is the first step of, uh, and I think practice, just go abhyas kehte Yes, sir, I think, but uh, being, I, I am a pedagogist, um, what you said, it's somewhere to me to be being therapeutic. It is therapeutic, yes. So yes, that the students should accept who they are, Mm-hmm. And uh, emotionally come uh, be at peace. Yes. Walk into this room. yes. 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 They have to be. I mean, go with the sense of uh, the like uh, Greek philosophers uh, used to say stoicism. stoicism. Yes. Uh, the Marcus Aurelius will be a good idea to uh, hear about or think about. Definitely concerned Marcus here. <laughs> so that. Ultimately, what is it? I mean, nobody is putting you through a slaughterhouse or anything. Interview board is only, they are going to ask you questions and you should go with the confidence that you know the things and whatever you don't know, you can be truthful about it. So there's nothing to be scared of. That kind of a, with this approach, I think, General Sir, that is what uh, you have to, I will uh, read uh, Compare this with a similar situation in the army and uh, to be, uh, you know, the army in the promotion board, hmm. first promotion board at the age of 35, 36 years, 70% officers get rejected. I mean, they were rejected to convey to a civilian crowd. Not because they are not good, it is because the vacancies are so limited. Right. So in the army, we say that you have to have your ambition, you know, which must be commensurate with your capability. There's a similar situation here, 3,000 watt candidates who are qualified written exam. So about uh, one third will be selected. So you know that two thirds won't be selected. And actually really it is the best 1,000 on that day. There are students, when we uh, speak to them, they said, so a day before in the interview I did very well, mm-hmm. but today I have not done well. Yeah. So because that depends on so many factors, you know, one day you feel great about, you, about yourself, you may be lucky that the line of questioning has gone into your strength areas and the other day it may not happen so. So, uh, when you come here, uh, one must, as uh, Captain Gallor said that, understand that these are the realities and if this door closes, some other door will open. Mm. And uh, uh, I think the best example is, uh, let me tell the people who listen to this, President Abdul Kalam, he wanted to be an Air Force pilot. He was rejected by the Services Selection Board. Then he went on to be the most famous scientist of India and became the President of India and he became the, uh, you know, uh, the Supreme Commander in the Defense Forces. So those who do not make this, they must try very hard to make this, but if they don't, that is what they have to like. Uh, this door is closing, other door will open for sure. Yeah. As long as you do close. And I think that's uh, another very important piece of stage advice right there. Very, very important to bear in mind when you go into the interview because I think they're mostly bogged down by the fear of failure also. True. Fact True. that they choke up so easily. True. And uh, not too long ago, I was in the same situation. Uh, which brings me to my next question for ma'am. 
मैम एप्टीट्यूड यू स्पेंड सो मेनी ईयर्स डेकेट्स इन द सर्विसेज यू ग्रूम्ड ऑफिसर्स यू सीन हाउ दे आर यू बिन योर वन योर सेल्फ फॉर द लॉन्गेस्ट टाइम वॉट इज द एप्टीट्यूड फॉर ऑफ अ सिविल सर्वेंट विच इज नॉट दैट ऑफ अ लॉयर से और फॉर अ डॉक्टर वॉट इज इट दैट मेक्स अमंगस्ट अ ग्रुप ऑफ से हंड्रेड पीपल जनरल पॉपुलेशन सम पीपल सूटेड फॉर द सिविल सर्विस एंड अदर्स नॉट See, whenever we are faced with a problem, we should try to analyze the problem in its whole perspective, answering the questions: what, why, when, how can I get rid of it, and how can I solve it, so without causing the real problem to many, yeah. the least problem solution. So. That is one thing because uh, there are many times there are a lot of hindrances. Sometimes the unions will not allow you to work. Sometimes uh, that's also a big uh, issue. If you are given a charge where it is primarily a union oriented, so you have to tackle them. Mm. I have faced one uh, union problem to the extent that they would not allow me to enter the office. Mm. They blocked the entry to the office. But then I asked them that they locked the office and they kept the key inside their shoe. Oh. Neta ji jo the, unhone they kept he kept the key inside his shoe, oh. and he was wearing the shoe. So somehow between them only somebody leaks the information. Hmm. So I instead of getting scared and going away, I thought I must face them. otherwise uh, every time they will start uh, ransacking the office so i went to him and i said please you need to take out your shoes so he took it out and i said ye kya hai bola ye to mere ghar ki hai humne kaha koi baat nahi hai aap ek bari khol ke to dekhte hai so i stood there and i asked him to open the door the gate was opened and all the candidates all the employees who wanted to go inside to work because all of them did not want to participate in the strike but they did not have courage to go inside and work mm-hmm. and it was locked mm-hmm. so i i stood there and i asked them ki if he is go inside all of you who want to join the duty yeah. so at least 50% of them went inside they started working and that was why relief because a strike because of our strictness mm-hmm. is uh, are not a good thing so they continued to work and i kept on getting all the information at every hour mm-hmm. at how many student how many employees have come so the number went on adding slightly so that was how i dealt with that particular situation so every time you have to next time i was better because i knew and i understood that these union can create problem so i discussed with them the problems and i said ki you tell me what kind of solution do you want so for getting a solution you also will have to compromise on your sense of uh, happiness or the uh, aram mm. so you have to come in time you have to work less much and you don't have to really enjoy and go back just because you are leaders union leaders you cannot just go back so gradually it was an agreement and i was a more amicable solution so somehow we are faced with these kind of problems but with a little bit of harmony and uh, some empathy with them we can solve this kind of problem so ma'am would it be correct to say that the x factor here is emotional intelligence yeah and to be able to use it in uh, situations like these sometimes yes um but ma'am for a person who's never been in a situation like that like most of the aspirants we see what can we tell them in this short span of time to somehow perhaps a little bit simulate or prepare them for this but they have to analyze what is their strength hmm. and how to deal with problems how what is their uh, aptitude which is the plus point and then they have to work accordingly right right, right. each one will have one or the other trait which is strong in them mm-hmm. so they have to analyze their comfort zone mm-hmm. right so if if i may so you mentioned the washing washing yes 
I'll share this very personal example. Mm -hmm. I was the deputy GOC of a division in Nagaland, uh, the brigadier, brigadier very senior officer in the army. And as I walked into the mess for lunch, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, so proceeded guy who couldn't, uh, who had nothing else to look forward to in Korea, with a glass of beer in his hand, and the mess he walked up to me and he told me, sir, one day I'll hit you so hard on your backside that you will not know what has hit you. So it's like uh, somebody who's, uh, you know, a joint secretary and uh, a junior director comes and tells him this. So how does one respond to this? So, and there were other officers present in the best and they waited for me to explode. I just smiled. Yeah. I didn't explode at all. The officer's name, unfortunately, is no more, uh, Krishna. I said, Krishna, you please see me in my office tomorrow, 11 o'clock. I went and I had lunch with everybody else, and I came back. And he took a long story short. I told him, you think because you are superseded, uh, nothing can be done to you. So these are the options that the army gives me. And I can make your life hell if I choose to get after you. But you are a good man who's losing battle to liquor. And you are a decorated soldier and a medal gallantry. I'll give you one more chance. I'll walk half the way, you walk half the way. You find a friend in me. You repeat that mistake once more, you regret the day you met me. You got it. But believe me, you became my man Friday. In Nagaland, when it rained so much, he would stand six hours, eight hours uh, on the road getting work done. And then when I posted out, he said, Sir, Basically, it was about the, I understood that man's problems. That he's a good man. But under the influence of liquor and his family challenges, one family broken, another family in trouble. He was losing that sense of balance. Uh, let me give another chance. So he came around. So this emotional intelligence, what you asked, is uh, such a beautiful thing to understand. So definitely, I think uh, the UPSC is explicitly testing for this. It is mentioned clearly as one of the portions of the syllabus of the ethics paper now. Okay. They'll put uh, people through case studies. And they'll figure out that. But sir, since all the experience of these experiences is coming up, the benefit. So would you care to share anyone from your career? Emotional intelligence is very important because uh, I will cite one example. You know, we have been, uh, you've been posted in Delhi Customs and so I've been, I, I mean, I've been AC, yeah. anti something. So uh, the year, I think if I remember correctly, 95 or 96, those days, a lot of this mumming of these hard disks used to take. Mm. And we had searched a lot of these uh, couriers from uh, Assam and that side coming. And uh, Nehru place, I think most of the shops were huh. searched by us. Mm. One day, two bus load full of traders, the shop owners, mm. descended upon the new customers with red fl uh, the black flags. And uh, they uh, pried open the gate of the custom house and they came inside and that, uh, that porch, they walked up to the thing, got inside and uh, a slogan shouting at the, I think about a crowd of about 500 traders. Mm. Two buses and plus their private cars and other things. Uh. Now, my boss, I was assistant collector at that time. Mm. You know, assistant commissioner, we became later on. Okay. She said, uh, Captain, what's happening? I said, I don't know if you know what I'm saying. I'm not sure if you know what I'm saying. I'm not sure if you know what I said, sir, I think uh, something like, I'm not sure if you know what I'm saying. He said, Police ko bula lo. When the collector said, nahin, call the cops. I said, Give me an opportunity, let me deal with that. I went down. Of course, the preventive officers and all were there. So we have, as you know, service weapon and everything. Sipai, bai, sab kuch hai. I said, uh, who is uh, your leader? I said, what exactly has happened? You tell me. I walked up to them, uh, all by myself. And they were, you know, all of them, Jande and uh, Murdabad, etc., etc. I said, look, uh, we can talk. So those 10, 15 of them, they said that, okay. 
took them to my office. I asked him, what is the issue? He, he said, sir, aap kya kal your team had come and they searched our office or pura amara, I mean, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? आपने हमारा मतलब सत्यानाश कर दिया हमारा धंधा चौपट हो गया वगैरह वगैरह और वो आपके पहले जो थे वो वो सेल्स टैक्स वाले बंदे आके गए थे उन्होंने हमारा ये सीज कर लिया वो सीज कर लिया आई कुड गेट अ सेंस दैट ये द इशू इज कि ये परेशान हो गए इससे यू नो फ्रीक्वेंट संचित दे आर टू ट्रेड नॉट विस्टैंडिंग दैट दे डीलिंग विद दिस मंगली गुड्स एंड अदर थिंग्स ऑल्सो सो Uh, got uh, called the canteen called for uh, you know 10 15 uh, glasses of water and tea and samosa and other things served them i said look i'm so and so i'm assistant collector in charge of uh, anti swagling and uh, like you you are into the business of dealing with your uh, hardware I, my business is to uh, seize the smuggling book your hard disk and your computer and a whole lot of things i mean whatever you have not uh imported or obtained legal you would appreciate that uh, this is my job just like that is your job so after i uh, i mean this was the process of firstly uh, ascertaining who is the more vocal type and uh, isolate them yeah like a pack of lions you have to you know sure. carefully assess Uh, who should be isolated and tackled first that her leadership is you know when you are uh, i mean i will not call them adversary but i would say the party on the other side of the table but they weren't really hostile uh, uh, clearly hostile with black flags and uh, yeah. all ready to charge and matlab ladne mar peet ke mood mein aaye the then they realize that slowly you have to gain the upper hand uh, law enforcement doesn't uh, it is it doesn't work with pleas and uh, you know law enforcement you have to have the uh, force of the law behind you so dealt with them served them tea softened that and then politely tell them look this is my job i'm nothing against you start ab se meri koi dushmani nahi and uh, i appreciate that aap kya ye do searches back to back to we ye ab humko to pata nahi ki aapne to kya hum ka how would i know ki aap kya ye सेज टेस्ट की सर्च पहले हुई है एंड बट आई विल हैव टू यू टेल मी शुड आई टेल द गवर्नमेंट कि आप क्योंकि ये बसों में भर के आए हैं आपने यू टेक इन द प्लेस अब मैं आपसे डर जाऊँ और मैं uh, अपने विभाग को ये कह दूँ कि सर मैं तो डरता हूँ अब मैं सर्च करने नहीं जाऊँगा आप क्या आपकी ये अपेक्षा है डी यू एक्सपेक्ट मी टू से दिस नहीं नहीं सर ऐसे नहीं है ऐसी कोई गल नहीं है ऐसी थोड़े बंदे हैं ये वो यू नो यस I also spoke to them. I commanded Khalsa troops, so I can speak uh, Punjabi fluently. I spoke to them in their language, literally and figuratively. So they understood uh, that look uh, is not a uh, is nothing unfair. He has only performed his duty. Believe me, Ravi. We continued to search whenever we had the information, or जो वो leader था. उसी को विटनेस बनाते थे अगली बार पंचनामा ड्रॉ करने के लिए आई आई शॉर्ट दिन दैट लुक नो एनकी पैनकी दे विल बी एवरीथिंग एज पर दी स्टैब्लिश प्रोसीजर आई एल एंश्योर दैट एंड नो अरेस्टमेंट नो अननेसेसरीली सीजिंग ऑफ योर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट और एनीथिंग व्हिच इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड बाय कस्टम्स एंड नो हेरसमेंट ऑफ एनी काइंड इफ देर इज एनी वायलेट्स दीज इंस्ट्रक्शन you feel free to walk up to me and tell me we we we'll take care of that we solved the problem we continued to search without any hassles but had we i think uh, it was a explosive situation and sir if i'm correct i yeah. mean assistant collector i was also started i started posted as assistant commissioner of at, at the chennai airport this was my first post okay, okay at a time when gold smuggling was at its, at its peak because yes. there was this tariff difference between the yeah, yeah. prices yeah. and so whenever that happens gold just starts to flow i know 2012 it, 13 into the country yes yeah, it was that time yeah. and it was not at all an easy time because i could not make head or tail of it and it was very difficult very difficult sir. i mean i would not say anything more than this yes and extremely difficult with the language and everything i couldn't understand for the first six months yeah. what is going on yeah, yeah. but then i figured the only way mm-hmm. to do what needs to be done is through physical presence alone 
because that's all I have. Mm -hmm. And that there I had the, the advantage. That did it. Yeah. So I, I mean, you had to uh, literally uh, flex your muscles. Uh, I just stood there uh -huh. the entire time yeah. on the green channel. Yeah. And whatever hanky panky was happening, mm -hmm. started to reduce. And then somebody would come to distract me, sir. I uh, have to eat something. I 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 have to And so that is what uh, I experienced for a full year. And then slowly, the gravity of the situation began to unravel. Mm -hmm. When I stood there, I started to notice the same guys keep coming every day. Yes. Yeah. All of them had cold chains and everything. Mm -hmm. So carriers. The point, yes, carriers. The, the point I think which the audience uh, should know is that situations like these happen very quickly. The interview, the personality test is not just for some sort of filtering. It yeah. just put you in a situation like this within a few months. It is really real. Yeah. I mean, uh, depending on which service you land up, yeah. if you are in IRS customs, I mean, you will hit the ground running. Yeah. So, you better be tested that you have you possess that emotional intelligence yes. to be able to cope with when a Caesar took place didn't go home for five days uh, with a shaving kit mm. in the common bathroom, you know, yes. shaving and sleeping on the sofa. So that kind of a thing is expected in that role. So be prepared for that. Yes. So one is being uh, tested for UPSC is, uh, you know, screening you for suitability for those kind of roles and various Police officers, including IPS, Foreign Service, definitely. If somebody is, um, just to flag it, if somebody's option is Foreign Service, mm. take it from me. A large number of questions from the panel will be on foreign policy issues. Yeah. The way India has, uh, the way Indian foreign policy has evolved. Mm. What are his, uh, you know, I'm just revealing, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> the candidates will benefit from it. Yes. Uh, I think I will only say this much. Rest uh, we will see in the interview. Uh, a thorough knowledge of various the way foreign policy has evolved and what are its current challenges and how certain technological factors have positively affected the foreign policy. This sir was an essay. I recall a few day, a few years ago, last to last year. What are the foreign policy? What is it? How has technology altered foreign policy? They asked this. Oh dear. Okay. Yes. So intuition is not wrong. I'm surely sir. So uh, if you are foreign service opti, if you are a IRS uh, customs or uh, income tax, uh, you know preference uh, second third or whatever, then some questions on revenue and uh, the situation of the economy and uh, uh, direct tax code and you know. You prepared for those types. IES, obviously. Mm. Uh, IPS, if you have opted, mm. first preference, mm. be prepared uh, to answer questions on uh, the police. Mm -hmm. And uh, first and second administrative reforms and Prakash Singh case. Yeah. There's no harm in yes, informing the, uh, the viewers. Yes. So these are... Uh, we better explain everything with examples. Yeah. So, some questions will definitely be asked on your preference. Mm. Mm. So, that would be your area. You better be adequately prepared. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, yes, sir, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mary Dendro, sir, for this conversation. And so much of it has come out uh, that I think it will take a while for people to appreciate uh, everything that we've said. In fact, it might take me a while to create transcripts of it and let people know what the central message is, uh, which I think we did uh, in this session what perhaps we required four sessions for. and But we perhaps have more of them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Said very much. For sure. Thank you.